Today, we start our two-part study of machine learning. Last time, we learned about problem solving and searching. We learned that we can get a robot to solve a problem it hasn't seen before by giving it an algorithm or a set of rules to apply as it moves through problem space. But what could we do if we don't know ahead of time what rules to give the robot in order to allow it to solve the problem? This is where machine learning comes in. In machine learning, we are trying to write an algorithm that allows a robot to build a set of rules for solving a problem after it is exposed to the problem. This will all make more sense if we use an example. In your kit, you have a set of little paper pieces. These little paper pieces could be categorized in different kinds of ways. For example, we could categorize them by shape circles in one group, squares in another group, and triangles in a third group. Or we could categorize them by color. Red shapes in one group, green in another group, and blue in another group. Or we could categorize them by size. Large objects in one group and the small objects in a different group. Now if we know ahead of time how we are going to group the objects, then we can just write an algorithm that gives the robot a set of rules for how to categorize the objects. For example, if we know ahead of time that the objects are going to be grouped by color, we could write some rules that say, if the blue color value is greater than this, and the red color value is less than this, and the green color value is less than this, then place the object in category 1. Else, if the red value is less than this, and so on. But suppose that we don't want to tell the robot ahead of time how the objects are going to be sorted. Could we just show the robot examples of objects in the different categories and have the robot learn its own set of rules for how to categorize the objects? This is what machine learning is all about. Any machine learning algorithm is split up into two different phases, called the training phase and the testing phase. The training phase is the time when the robot is learning, and the testing phase is the time when we stop learning and check to see how well the robot has learned what we wanted it to learn. Now, there are basically three different kinds of machine learning categories, and two of them we're going to pay most attention to in this class. These two categories are called supervised and unsupervised. There's also a third category called reinforcement learning that we won't really spend much time on in this class. These two categories, supervised and unsupervised, are differentiated by whether or not our robot will have a teacher or a supervisor during the training phase. For example, suppose we have sorted our pieces according to some categories and we are about to start the robot's training phase. Suppose we show the robot a piece and tell it that this piece is in category 1. Then we give it another piece and tell it that this piece is in category 2. Then another piece and the fact that it is in category 1, and so on. In this case, we would be using a supervised learning algorithm because we, the supervisor, are telling the robot the right answer for each piece that we show. Of course, after the training process is over, the robot will have to categorize pieces it hasn't seen before on its own without the supervisor. But this is a supervised learning method because there is a supervisor involved in the training process. Now, suppose instead that we would start out by telling the robot only that there are two categories of pieces. Then, we give the robot a piece, but we don't tell the robot which category this piece belongs in. Then, we give it another piece, and again, don't tell it which category, and so on. In this case, the robot has to figure out on its own how to group the pieces, even the pieces we use in the training process. 
After the training process is finished, we could show the robot pieces that were used in the training process or pieces that were not used, and the robot will tell us which category it thinks the piece belongs to. This kind of learning is an unsupervised learning process because we do not ever tell the robot, even in the training process, which category each piece belongs to. The robot has to figure that out for itself. So why would we ever choose to use either a supervised or unsupervised learning algorithm? Pretty much always, supervised methods will work better than unsupervised methods, as you might expect. The only reason we would use unsupervised methods are when we, the supervisors, do not know the information that we want the robot to learn. For example, we might have a set of data that we've collected from a process and that data has some underlying patterns that we would like to find out. But we ourselves cannot figure out what the patterns are. We could use an unsupervised method to find patterns that really exist in data that we can't see ourselves. So today, we're going to look at the most common type of unsupervised learning called k-means clustering. We're going to learn how this method works, and we'll write some code in Python to do it as we learn about it.